Welcome to Internet Mapping. This is the first in the series of lectures associated with Geography 485 and 585L at the University of New Mexico. This lecture will cover the introduction and outline for the course and set the stage for the remainder of the semester's work. Let's start with some introductions. While this is not an interactive presentation, I hope that we will have an opportunity in this week's collaboratory on Tuesday afternoon to actually uh, communicate more directly with each other in anticipation of answering some of these questions. I can tell you a little bit about myself right now to set the stage for our exchange later. So who am I? I'm Carl Benedict. I am a member of the faculty in both the Department of Geography and University Libraries. And I've been developing geospatial technologies for the last 25 years or so, um, with a particular emphasis on geographic information architectures for the last 12 years in my work here at the Earth Data Analysis Center, where I'm the director. My academic background is actually as an archaeologist with my undergraduate degree from the University of California at Berkeley and my master's and doctoral degrees uh, from here at U the University of New Mexico. So next, I will review the syllabus for the class, including contact information for me, an overview of the course description and the objectives, the format for the course, and in particular, the structure of our weekly activities, and then also the overall structure of the course, a brief discussion of the reading materials, including the required and recommended texts, a discussion of the evaluation and grading approach that we'll be using for the course, a high-level overview of the different topics that we will consider, and then finish with a discussion of the communication model that we will be using in the class. So the instructor, as I've already mentioned, um, is, uh, is uh, Carl Benedict, and I am the director of the Earth Data Analysis Center and also a research assistant professor in both the geography department and the university libraries. You can see here my email address and my office number. Um, I'm located in Bandelier West, and I'm generally in my office, but I ask you to please uh, try to make an appointment if you would like to come by and see me as I am often in and out of the office and, and frequently in meetings. Um, you can also reach me in my, at my office telephone number at 505-277-3622, extension 234. Um, but again, I think I would prefer, if you could, to uh, reach me by email if possible, unless it is a, a, an urgent matter, in which, at which point uh, please feel free to come by or call and leave me a message. So the objectives of this class are really uh, several fold. The first is to provide an overview of the basic web mapping technologies and their basic concepts that underlie their use in delivering maps and map data through web browsers. So you might think of this as true online mapping where you might use Google Earth or other application interfaces to deliver geospatial information to users. Behind that, there are a set of open standards that we will also be talking about in terms of the standards from the Open Geospatial Consortium, World Wide Web Consortium, the uh, International S uh, Standards Organization, and other open standards that are really the foundation for the internet in general and geospatial applications in particular. We will make use of some of these standards-based services in desktop mapping applications so that you can see how you can actually interact with remote data and visualization services in work that you may be doing on the desktop, also in work that you might be able to do in terms of enabling others that are using those desktop tools to access the data that you might be able to share with them. And as a part of that, we will also actually do some development work with a platform that allows you to publish geospatial data on the internet 
using the open standards that we will be working with. So across the entire course, we will both be developing web applications, data services that can support those web applications and related desktop applications, and then also practice in integrating those standards-based services into desktop applications. The class format is based largely on the model that has been used in the previous classes that has proved quite successful in providing a combination of background knowledge and practical experience working with these technologies. In particular, each week there will be a lecture that will be delivered as a video uh, product that you can review at your leisure that will be a complement to a lab exercise each week where you will be able to work hands-on with the technologies and concepts that we're discussing. And it's that hands-on experience that is really central to your success in understanding these technologies as it is really only through using them that you will be able to understand the strengths and potentially the weaknesses and the complexities of working with these technologies. Overall, the class is very much exploratory and problem-based, where throughout the course, you will be looking for data, you will be experimenting with deploying services and using services that are published by others, and you will be continuously encouraged to work on problems that interest you and that are real-world applications of the technologies that we will be discussing. Finally, the work that we're doing is very much cumulative, where the concepts and technologies that we're using really build over the course of the entire semester. So if you find yourself getting behind or you're not able to do some of the work in each week's lab session or you're not able to keep up with the lecture material, you are likely to fall behind and continue to fall behind. So I strongly encourage you to keep up with the work every week and make sure that if you are running into any problems that you let me know so that I can help you deal with those problems before you get too far behind the curve. In contrast to previous times that this class has been taught, there have actually now been developed a number of texts that provide a fairly good systematic presentation of some of the web mapping technologies that we are using. So as a complement to the online resources that we have traditionally used in the class uh, in previous years, we also have a number of either recommended or required texts that are also a part of the class. These texts provide uh, some key background material and also serve as references for the uh, core concepts and technologies being used in the class. In particular, as far as the required texts for the class, we have three. The first is the HTML Manual of Style, a clear, concise reference for hypertext markup language, where this provides a good grounding in HTML, the language of web interfaces, which will be the key technology that you will be working with in developing web interfaces for geospatial applications. A second book is Beginning Google Maps API 3, where this is a book that covers the current release of the Google Maps application programming interface that we'll be working with early in the semester as you get to do your first experimentation in delivering geospatial data over the web and through a web browser. A second required text is the Open Layers 2.10 Beginner's Guide, where this is a, a book that covers the um, core capabilities of the Open Layers JavaScript library 
that we'll be working with later in the semester as you've ha had a chance to learn more of the open standards and we will be using those open standards in developing additional web-based mapping applications. There is an additional optional text called Designing with Web Standards, which is an excellent book that talks about some overall approaches to developing web applications that will maximize your ability to easily maintain them and deliver them into the current set of web browsers, but also provide capabilities that'll, that will allow you to move those applications into future browsers without having to do significant redevelopment. This is a model that is different from the web development strategies of even four or five years ago, where there was a lot of customization done for particular web browsers. By using some of the approaches that are, that are outlined in Designing with Web Standards, your applications will be in a much better position to be able to uh, be usable now and in the future as new web browsers emerge. Three of these texts are on reserve in Zimmerman Library, uh, specifically the HTML, ma HTML Manual of Style, the Beginning Google Maps API, and the Designing with Web Standards book. Those are all books for which I was able to obtain hard copies from the publishers, and I've put those hard copies on reserve in the library. The evaluation and grading for the class is a combination of scores that you will get in your weekly lab assignments and homework assignments and examinations. So let's talk about each of those in a little bit greater detail. So over the course of the semester, there will be 13 weekly lab assignments, which each assignment being worth nine points. The lowest two lab assignments will be dropped. So if for some reason you're not able to complete an assignment or submit it on time, you will have two of those 13 assignments that you will be able to drop. Those assignments will be due on the Thursday of each week when they're assigned by 5 p.m. There will be no late assignments accepted. The, um, the, an extra point will be added to the 99 points that come from the 11 scores that will be kept, bringing the total number of points for the lab assignments to 100. There will also be four homework assignments over the course of the semester with each assignment being worth 25 points. These homework assignments will reinforce the activities of the lab assignments, but be instead focused on a small project, where over the course of the homework assignments, you will identify a particular problem, data sets, and then perform an implementation of some of the technologies that we've discussed as a part of the sequence of assignments. For each of the four homework assignments, they will be due on the Thursday in the week following the assignment. So you will have uh, nearly two weeks to accomplish the homework assignment. As with the lab assignments, these will be due at 5 p.m. Mountain Time on the Thursday when those assignments are due. For both the lab assignments and homework assignments, there will be occasionally a peer review component where you will be asked to evaluate the assignment products that have been generated by the classmates within the class and to provide input uh, as a part of a peer review of those products. When those assignments occur, I will provide greater detail about the process for the peer review and how it fits into the grading scheme. Over the course of the semester, we will have two examinations each worth 100 points. The midterm and final exam will both be take-home exams over which you will have three days to apply the concepts that you have learned and demonstrate the technical skills that you have developed through a combination of questions and production activities that combine those concepts with the technical implementation skills you've developed. 
The midterm exam is scheduled to take place during week eight of the course, and the final exam is scheduled for week 17 during the finals week for, at UNM. Each exam is worth 100 points. Overall, between the lab assignments, the homework assignments, and the examinations, there will be a total of 400 points available. The grading scheme will be a straight percentage grading scheme that you're probably already familiar with, where each grade is basically a 40-point band, where to earn an A, you would need to get 360 to 400 points, to earn a B, 320 to 359.9, a C, 280 to 319.9, a D, 240 to 279.9, and any number of points less than 240 would be a failing grade. The grading for all of the assignments will be based upon a combination of technical and implementation uh, characteristics. So it will not just be sufficient to answer as sort of the technical requirements, but the web pages that you produce will also need to be uh, visually useful and interpretable. And this is where some of the peer review will come in. So to get an A or A plus in the class, you'll have to both master the technical implementation requirements, but also be able to produce web resources that are clear, concise, and easy to read. So now let's change over to the topics that will be addressed in the class. Among the topics that we will focus on include internet mapping clients that include the development of web pages based on the hypertext markup language or HTML that are interactive through the use of JavaScript and that are styled using cascading style sheets or CSS. As a part of the internet mapping client work, you will also learn some basics of the Google Maps application programming interface or API and also work with the Open Layers JavaScript library as an alternative way to display geographic data within a web browser. We will discuss some general concepts related to geospatial services oriented architectures and how you can connect the various components of a system, including databases, overlying services for visualization and analysis, and clients into an overall architecture that is both flexible and distributed. As a part of that services-oriented architecture, we will be discussing a number of open standards, including those coming out of the Open Geospatial Consortium, or OGC, and of those focusing primarily on Web Map Services, or WMS, Web Feature Services, WFS, Web Coverage Services, WCS, KML, formerly known as Keyhole Markup Language. We will also be working with the Extensible Markup Language, or XML, which has come out of the World Wide Web Consortium. After we have worked with these open standards and gained some familiarity with them, we will then practice using these standards in desktop clients. So essentially integrating these standard services into the more traditional desktop GIS environment. Finally, we will go through some exercises in developing a platform where you can actually share data and publish it over the internet using the same OGC standards that I was describing earlier. So finally, we're gonna talk about some basic concepts starting with a brief discussion of what intermap, internet mapping is, then considering some basic definitions and finishing up with a discussion of some of the tools that we'll be using in this class. So first, what is internet mapping? 
Internet mapping could really be thought of as extended desktop mapping, where we are moving outside of the traditional desktop environment that we may be accustomed with, and instead using open standards to connect to remote data and map services as if they were local services. Another aspect of internet mapping is the concept of geospatial data sharing, where as an alternative to sharing data files over the internet or sending as email attachments, you are instead publishing services that allow the dynamic access of those data and visualizations based upon those data. And we will be working through the various open standards that allow you to do that. Finally, another dimension of internet mapping is the concept of web client-based mapping, where as an alternative to dedicated geospatial applications like geographic information systems, we will be working with methods for being able to deliver maps and geospatial data through web browsers, again using a set of open standards that facilitate that sort of exchange. So coming back to this overall concept of internet mapping, it extends the traditional desktop mapping model through the integration of external data and services. It facilitates the exchange of data and products based upon geospatial data through open standards over the internet, and it enables the development and delivery of geospatial knowledge and content through web-based client applications. So let's talk about a few definitions that are sort of key to these concepts that I've just described. First, we have the internet, which is really just the global computer network of computers that connect to each other over TCP IP, which is an international protocol for communication between one machine and another. The World Wide Web is a subset of the applications that run over the internet, typically using the Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP protocol that really uh, concentrates on the packaging of data in a variety of standard formats, including hypertext markup language, or HTML, extensible markup language, XML, or XHTML, which is actually a version of HTML that is rendered as XML. The content over the World Wide Web, web is also defined in terms of how it should be presented using cascading style sheets, or CSS, and how those applications might behave through the use of JavaScript as a programming language in many instances. Mapping is another key concept that really relates to the generation of cartographic products that include map images and other elements that provide reference information related to those images, whether they're legends, tool interfaces, geographic scale, reference as to the orientation of the map, and other reference information. Analysis consists of the development of models, whether they're statistical or otherwise, that enable the exploration of geospatial data and testing hypotheses using those data, where analyses might actually be performed through interaction with remote data services or the combination of products from those services as they are integrated with data on your local system. Open standards are a class of standards that have been adopted by essentially a community of users. And while there are a variety of definitions of open standards, they typically are characterized by a process that is open to the public and that involves a national or international standards group of some sort. Um, and Another key characteristic of many open standards is that there are no limitations in their implementation in terms of required royalty fees or other uh, limitations on their use. Interoperability is the basic characteristic 
of systems to be able to share data and information with each other. And that is one of the key capabilities that is often enabled through the use of open standards. COTS, or commercial off-the-shelf software, are applications that are along the lines of what we're probably most familiar with in terms of applications that are purchased from vendors, often with license terms that restrict their use to the individual who has purchased the license, and in some cases restrict how those applications may be used or on what, tor what types of platforms they may be used. One of the uh, key benefits of some commercial off-the-shelf software is that there is an implicit or explicit promise of support for those applications from the vendors. In contrast to commercial off-the-shelf applications, the open source uh, software model is one in which the license for the software is consistent with an open source definition where there is typically a, a set of freedoms that are associated with that application in terms of um, access to the source code and freedom to modify and redistribute uh, that code or the modified code and applications based upon it. Data are the actual data that are associated with particular locations on the landscape in space and time. So you can think of an elevation model as one collection of data where the numeric elevation values are the data themselves. In contrast, metadata are essentially documentation about data where they provide um, background information that may be used to understand a data set, um, including potentially its appropriate use or characteristics. Um, metadata also is associated with services. So when you inquire about the capabilities of a particular service, you will often be provided with a metadata document of some sort that provides information about how the service operates and how to interact with it. So let's talk for a few minutes about the tools that we will be using as a part of this class. One key tool that will be shared amongst all of the class participants will be a server platform. This is a server that is physically located within the geography department here at UNM, and it consists of the Linux operating system, and it has a number of key applications that are running on it to enable the activities that we will performing, including the GeoServer uh, geospatial portal platform, the Apache web server, and a number of key geospatial libraries, including the geospatial data abstraction library and the associated OGR library for handling vector data, and the Proj4 library, which is used by many applications for handling coordinate transformation functions within applications. For your work as a student in the class, there are a number of software and hardware requirements. As far as software requirements are concerned, you can successfully work through the materials for the class on a computer that can that has either the Microsoft Windows Vista or 7 operating system or above, or the Mac OS 10.6 or above. Um, also, if you are inclined or interested in using Linux as an operating system, that is possible, but I can probably uh, help you in selecting some specific tools to help you do what you'd like using the Linux system. As we will be working with a variety of geospatial data sets, you will need some sort of geographic information system installed on your platform. In order to support the cross platforms, the different operating systems that we're working on, we will be using Quantum GIS or QGIS that is a freely downloadable geographic information system that is supported on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And there's a link provided to that in the lecture notes and also in the class syllabus. 
There will also be an opportunity to use ArcGIS 10 as an optional GIS platform to also work with some of the OGC standards that we will be experimenting with. Since this application is available for Windows only, this will be an operate this will be an optional uh, activity for the class. But if you're working in an ArcGIS environment, you might find it useful to work through some of the activities that we're going to talk about in terms of desktop GIS use uh, using ArcGIS. There are also some lower level tools that we will be uh, using in the class for geographic data processing and analysis, where depending upon your platform, you will look at downloading a particular set of tools. So for the Windows environment, you would want to download the FW Tools application. And if you're working in the Mac environment, you're going to want to download the G G GDAL, or Geospatial Data Abstraction Library, uh, and some related frameworks. There are links provided to both of those provided in the syllabus and in the first week's lecture notes. You will also need a text editor that is uh, effective for editing web page files and JavaScript files. And for that, there are again some specific applications that you can run on either Windows or Mac. And there are others for Linux, again, that I can point you in the direction of if you're wanting to work in Linux. As far as text editors concerned on Windows, you can use Notepad, something that is already included with the operating system, which, but which does not provide some more uh, helpful features for working with hypertext markup language or other related languages. Um, an alternative is the freely downloadable Notepad++, which you can run in Windows and you can install um, on your system very easily. On the Mac side, um, there is the free text edit application that is included with the operating system, but is similarly limited in its ability to provide some helpful uh, programming specific capabilities. Um, an alternative on the Macintosh is the Text Wrangler application, which is available as a free download, which is uh, more powerful in terms of helping you in writing HTML and related web language content for delivery over the internet. Also as a part of the class, we will be interacting between your home computer or your laptop computer and the class server. To be able to do that, you need, need to be able to communicate using the secure file transfer protocol, which is a way to transfer files between your computer and a remote computer. If you're a Windows user, and a, a basic tool that you can use for doing those file transfers is WinSCP, which is available as a free download. On the Mac side, the Fugu application is, is uh, also a freely downloadable program that is good for being able to do file transfers. As a complement to being able to transfer files between your local system and the class server, you also want to be able to interact with the class server through a terminal interface to modify files or move files around on the remote system. To be able to do that, you will need to use a client application that supports the secure shell protocol. On the Windows side, there's a freely downloadable application called PuTTY. And on the Mac, there's a program that is included in the operating system called Terminal. Finally, you're going to need a web browser to be able to view the web content that you will be developing and that other students in the class will be developing, in addition to looking at the online materials that are referenced throughout the class. While Internet Explorer um, is improving in terms of its support for a lot of the web standards, uh, the more uh, broadly supporting internet browsers that we will be focusing on this semester include Firefox and Chrome, both of which are available on all operating systems. Finally, regarding communication in the class, 
I expect that the model will evolve over the course of the semester as we get to know each other and we become increasingly familiar with the technologies that are available to us through the online learning environment. But given that it is likely to evolve, there are some core expectations that I would like to uh, provide to you. First, that I expect and will attempt to respond to all email questions within 24 hours. And in situations where I encounter common questions that have been provided by multiple students, I will respond to those questions through the online discussion board so that we can have a shared understanding of the answers to those questions as opposed to repeatedly um, providing the same information to multiple students. Also, I strongly encourage you to actually submit any questions that you have through the discussion board so that in addition to me taking a look at those and attempting to answer those questions, your peers in the class can also um, see the questions that you're asking and provide their insights based on their experience uh, working with the class materials and the technologies that we're all going to be working with.